Yo, yo, we live. Hey man, welcome, welcome back to the Golden Goose DFS show. I am your host, Chandler Blakely, aka Goose, here today bringing you another edition of my starting five for DraftKings and Fan Duel. But before we get into it, y'all already know we got the lineup review. With my uh lineup, I put out with the updated starting five on yesterday's slate. So let's jump right into the breakdown, man. And while we do- jumping into that, man, y'all jump to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn your notification bell on, man, so you know when the video drops every day, all right? Now, the tonight's slate, man, 10 game, it was another rough one for us, man. Same story as last night. Blowouts really hindered us. It was a rough one, man. We was off on a few plays as well, but blowouts mainly just uh, took care of us tonight. So if you caught the update at starting five yesterday, you know I went with Derrick Rose, Jordan Clarkson, Joe Ingles, uh, Okiki, and Yusef Nurkic, all right? Derrick Rose at the top. Uh, we got bamboozled here, man. Got him at 18% ownership. We thought he was locked in. He had been seeing uh 30 plus minutes over the past three games. And once Alex Burks got ruled out, we thought he could be in line to see 30 plus again. But he only saw 25 minutes tonight. I don't know why in this matchup against the Bulls, but they gave a few more minutes to quickly and and Rose didn't see his full run here. So in just in 25 minutes, man, he gave us 20 points. Rose is a guy who needs the minutes. He's more of a he's a scorer. So that coupled with him not shooting very well from the field tonight, man, that led to a, 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 a I ain't gonna say awful, but not not a great performance out of him. He he got the four right at four x basically, but not nearly enough. And you definitely don't want anything under five x when you playing uh, daily fantasy sports. So D Rose hurt us right here with this performance, but it's a combination of him not shooting well and not getting the full run that we thought. My next play, Jordan Clarkson. Going against the Sacramento Kings, a play we knew was chalky, but we felt like he was in a great spot. He could really put up a big number here in this matchup, especially with no Mike Conley and him seeing, uh, sh- sh- should have seen 30 plus minutes had the game stayed close. But the Jazz just really destroyed the Kings from the jump here, man. It got out of hand early as they beat them by almost 50 here. And at 40%, man, Jordan Clarkson, no closing run, no need to f- play the full game, only gave us 28 DK points. Yeah, like we knew it was going to be a little chalky, a lot of people was on, but just a great spot, an okay price on him. Like I said, it could have been a little bit better if you saw the video yesterday, but an okay price on DraftKings. We wanted to go to him, and we did. Got him at, like I said, 40% on, just didn't get it done for us. At the small forward, I went Joe Ingles because I felt like he was another solid play as well. I felt like Clarkson would handle most of the scoring duties, and Ingles would kind of serve as the point guard. You know, I felt he had more assist upside and things of that nature. He would try to uh, run the offense, and Joe Ingles came in at right at 21% on. Just another guy, just the blowout. I mean, he uh, 26 DK points from him right here, not nearly enough. It, that one, This one really hurts because it seems like everybody on the Jazz ball except for these two man so it was a rough one for us but i wanted to get to both of them i felt it was great spots great games you see an uptick in usage uptick in minutes with no uh uh mike conley but they let us down right here in this spot mr okiki right here man thought he was a great price 4900 for his 30 plus minutes that that he, he has been seeing in his matchup against uh the cleveland cavaliers here i want to get to this game for one i felt like it, it could i felt like it was some value in this game and i knew nobody was really going here it's t- two horrible teams horrible uh matchup no a game nobody was looking at but they, that's the thing about basketball even if it's a horrible game it's always usually for the most part you can find fantasy value in any game and i thought he was a solid price right here 4900 for his role and it, it, he reward us right here with 37 dk points man nice performance from okiki right here at 14 percent on and my man yusef nurkic man different night same story portland trailblazer with a blowout again man they they've been rolling the past two nights as yusef nurkic only saw 21 minutes man but gave us 29 dk points if they ever get in a game where he's gonna see that's close and he can see his full 30 plus minutes he's gonna crush this 6800 price tag so i have no problem going to nurkic next time out man i told you as, as he as long as he's under 7000 i'm gonna rock with nurkic 
Jerky. So I'm gonna I'm go right back to him next time. We got him at 16 percent ownership. Like I said, just a blowout man in the limited minutes for him. It really hindered him right here. And then finish out my lineup at the bottom. I wanted to, I wanted to go Brandon Goodwin here as I felt like um, he was a solid value play, solid price on him. I, I figured since he was playing, he was, should be in line for his full run. I wasn't really worried about it. I figured if he was hindered at all, they would just leave him um the, they they just would not play him. They would rest him, especially with Chris Dunn. Expected to see an increase in minutes, and they had Skylar Mays over there with Lou Will. So once he got ruled in, I figured he should be in line for full run. I was correct. He played 32 minutes. Got him right here at 10 percent on. He just had a horrible night. He was like two of 12, two of, two of 11, I think. Sorry, from the field and uh, just. 10 DK points, man. He whiffed right here. Really hurt us. And then rounding out at the bottom, man, I went Jason Tatum. I, I wanted a nice balanced core, man, starting five so I could pair up with a pay-up option like Tatum, like Jokic in some spots, and, you know, and and just work it that way. We got Tatum at uh, right at 7% ownership right here. He gave us right at 60 DK points. A nice performance from him and Jalen Brown over there in uh, Boston Celtics. And then my man at the bottom, Gordon Dragic, got him at 3%. Once um, Hero was ruled out and none was in, we figured it should be like an even split, 25-25. But we knew Dragic, he's been very efficient, man, when, when he's played this year. he knew he, We knew he, he had a chance to get it done for us and possibly see a, a, a few more minutes as um, – None was coming back from a neck injury, and you know they don't they don't mind uh, cutting none's minutes. So I wanted to get the Dragic right here. Got him at three percent on. He gave us thirty two DK points, man. Right pushing right at six X. Very solid performance from him. But as a whole, man, no, just another rough night over here. Blowouts hindered us again. That's back to back two rough nights, man. We gonna get it corrected over here tomorrow. Let's go see what we got cooking for y'all. All right. Coming in on tonight's slate, man, that point guard. We got, well, first we got a, a, a sixth game tonight. Should be very solid. You know, some injury news up in the air. But um, at the top at point guard, I, I want to go back to Fred Van Vliet. I have no problem going back to him right here. Uh, it's 7800 this price tag right here. I, I, I like this price on him, especially for the minutes he's going to see. He saw what right at 40 minutes last time out. They're going to need every bit of it to try to uh, beat the Denver Nuggets here. And he... The, the reason I'm going Van Vliet here is one, the minute upside. You know he can get you 40 minutes, maybe even 42, depending on how the game going. And just his shot volume. I mean, he's shot double-digit threes in three out of the last four games. He's just been shooting horribly. He's a very solid shooter. I don't expect his shooting woes to continue. And I think this is a good spot to go back to him. I know nobody's going to be on him right here. And like I said, this is a very solid price for a guy who has legitimate fifty-plus point upside. I want to get. The, I want to take a look at Fred Van Vliet in this matchup against the Denver Nuggets. Coming in as shooting guard, a guy I want to look at, man, Mr. Elwes right here from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now. The, 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 the reason I want to look here is we know Edwards is a scorer. He's been scoring all year. But recently his rebounding rate has picked up as he's giving you like nine rebounds in the last three games. And he's been adding some stocks, some steals and blocks in there, man. So he, he's really tr trying to mature into a, a, a player who, who can give you a little bit of everything outside of scoring. So I'm very interested, especially in this matchup against the Golden State Warriors. It's definitely going to be one of the higher total games on the slate tomorrow. And it just that fast pace, you know he still loves to shoot. He's he's still a threat to get twenty plus shots anytime. Twenty plus shots anytime he's on, he's on the court. So if he can just get a few of them to go, and you know he's the, he the, he's a gunner. He doesn't mind shooting them. So I definitely want to take a look at Anthony Edwards right here, especially with him adding the peripheral aspect to his game. Man. Coming in at small four, we know Kelly Oubre is looking doubtful for tomorrow. So, it's looking like he's going to be out. Kent Bazemore is slated to get the start. And just I expect him to see his full allotment of minutes. So, right at 30, 30 plus minutes, depends on how the game go. I just think he's too cheap right here. This is a minute play plus a price play. The minutes he's expected to see plus his price is just too low. 3900 man. Kent Bazemore should be a very solid value play tomorrow. He's going to go on to some ownership. But I'm I'm okay with it, especially this 3,900 in this matchup. Coming in at power forward, a guy I want to look at, O'Shea Brissett. 
going against the Brooklyn Nets. He's been saying this is another just like minute play. His, his price tag is okay. I wish it was a little lower, but he's just seeing so many minutes. He's getting so much, so much. So much time giving them extra chances at fantasy production, man. I like getting O'Shea Brissett here at this price, given the minutes he's expected to see, especially with the Nets uh, not not running a big center all the time and DeAndre Jordan. They gonna need Brissett down. Now he's, he he should get the minutes at power forward and some at center. As Jacar Sampson's a a liability getting foul trouble any given night. So I, I I'm liking O'Shea Brissett at this price tomorrow. And then coming in as son of guy I want to look at, Christian Wood. He's been on fire the last couple of games, and it's more than just his offensive production. He's really picked up his rebound rate, man. He's giving you 19 and 18 rebounds the last two games. And I want to take a look at him right here because I think 8200 is still a solid price on him. And he's getting a matchup against a guy in Brook Lopez who's not even interested in, 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 in rebounding, man. So I want to take a look at Christian Wood right here. I like getting to him at this price tag and in this matchup. Expecting a big double-double chance from Christian Wood right here hoping to keeping his rebounds going all right now let's go to take a look at FanDuel and see what I'm liking over there at the top with FanDuel I want to look at Malcolm Brogdon at the point guard 8500 against the Brooklyn Nets listen they're gonna need him and Karis LeVert to tote the load if they have any chance of staying in this game against the Nets no Sabonis no Miles Turner again they could be without Jeremy Lamb you got some other role guys that's uh pending injury news but Brogdon and LeVert is gonna have to shoulder the load man and I like getting to Malcolm Brogdon he's the primary ball handler the offense runs through him in this scenario with no Sabonis. So I like getting the Malcolm Brogdon's 8500 price tag. At the shooting guard spot, man, just want to stay with Fred Van Vliet, 7800 I'm expecting a big performance. I'm expecting to, to get the rust off and really find his shooting stroke tomorrow. I'll get you some Fred Van Vliet at 7800 Coming in at small forward, I have no problem going right back to the board. Kevin Porter Jr., 5600 Listen, I, I know he wet the bed last time out, but at 5,600, man, he's he's going to set the tempo for this uh, Houston Rockets offense, man. This is his show with no John Wall. So we've seen him give you, you know he has 50-plus point upside, man. He has real triple-double upside potential if he can find some extra rebounds. But he's going to get assists. He's going to score if his shot is falling, man. I like getting to Kevin Porter in this matchup against the Milwaukee Bucks. Coming in at power four, a guy I want to look at is Isaiah Stewart. We know the Pistons are doing their usual, resting their starters tomorrow. So no um, <clears throat> no Plumlee, no Corey Joseph, no uh, Jeremy Grant, man. Isaiah, Star should, Isaiah Stewart should be starting and expect to see 30-plus minutes. And you know he's always a double-double um, waiting to happen, man. I like him in this matchup. Price tag's a little higher than I like, but I think it's okay. He, he should be able to return value at this 5900 price tag. And then coming in as son of man, I want to look at Willie Hernan Gomez. We saw Steven Adams come back tonight but leave again with the toe. So I'm anticipating him being out tomorrow, man, which means hopefully Willie, Go Willie Hernan Gomez gets to start again. You know he's a solid fantasy producer. If he gets to start at this 4,900, man, going against the OKC Thunder, I'm going to love him in this matchup, all right? There you have it, man. My starting five for FanDuel, Malcolm Brogdon, Fred Van Vliet, Kevin Porter, Isaiah Stewart, and Willie Hernan Gomez. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pool. You know I'm going to have them in mind, man. That's going to do it for us here tonight. Y'all know the motto. Chances make champions. Y'all green up. I'll see y'all tomorrow, all right? Let's go.